So what you're looking at here is a white pine burl. And it's got some age on it. It was given to me by Daryl as a commission. And uh, this is probably the better, he gave me two of these. And this is the better of the two of them. And you know, there's a reason why I turn pine burls down or softwood burls down as a general rule. And here's the main culprit. This here is pitch. Now this, this will clog up your sandpaper like there's no tomorrow. Uh, there seems to be a lot of cracks in the very center of this. This is dry. I can't remember how many, Dar how many year, years Daryl said this was sitting around. It's quite light. Um, anyway, you know, of the two that he brought me, this is the better one. I'll get the other one. This one is wider, like this, but of course it's kind of stout here. This is a little over 12 inches big. Uh, the problem with this piece is the tons of pitch as well, but there's a lot of ring shakes. Shakes? Yeah, ring shakes. So there's a lot of delamination. So this is going to be... The plan is that this is going to be the bottom of the bowl and I was going to turn this natural edge, but I don't think that it's stable enough to do that safely. Now he told me that he doesn't want any resin, he doesn't want any inlay, nothing. Don't, don't fill the wormholes. These are probably from the Longhorn Beetle is probably what made these holes. So. He just wants it to be in its purest form, and I certainly can appreciate that. So, you know, we're going to turn this, or we're going to attempt to turn this. Hopefully, we can make a video out of this, and it doesn't uh, go flying across the shop and coming apart. I will stabilize some of these cracks that you see here with the CA glue, but um, let's get this mounted between centers and uh, start shaping this thing and seeing what it's actually going to look like on the inside. You know, even though these are these are a burl, they typically don't produce much for grain. So that's the other reason why I turn them down. The fact that, you know, they're usually loaded full of pitch, especially if they're green, uh, sticky, sticky stuff. So I really try to stay away from it. But we'll see what's on the inside of this. And uh, you never know, maybe it'll be the beautiful Nicest wood turning I've ever made. I'm just going to nip this off in the bandsaw and then we'll see it over on the lathe. Like to welcome you to this week's bonus content. I don't do this every week, but sometimes I do. That's why it's important to have your bell notification on. So we're going to trim this pine burl up and see what it gives us. And, you know, these are fairly easy to work with. The problem with working with softwood, though, is you got to make sure that you have really sharp tools. So I'm using the 5 8 bowl gouge here from David Ellsworth, and it's freshly sharpened. And the problem with pine, of course, it's soft, and like any softwoods, and that includes soft hardwoods, it's prone to tear out. So if you're gonna to attempt to turn any of these really soft woods, it's really important that you have sharp tools while doing so. Typically when softwoods are cut for say lumber, you know, for instance, for building your house, whatever you're building with, that's run through kilns. And when it's run through those kilns, it helps to set the pitch so that it's not as runny and sticky. Kind of make it like a, a hard crusty material. 
But, you know, I, I have worked with a lot of pine. My wife and I used to have a toll painting business where she taught toll painting. And then, of course, I would make all the products that uh, for her students to paint on. So toll painting is essentially painting on wood. You know, this isn't a real good example because there's lots of ring shake in this. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it's basically ring delamination. Typically, I don't see that in burl. So that's kind of strange with this piece. It typically happens just in normal, um, in the tree itself. And I believe that that's caused a lot of times by uh, strong winds and it will cause ring delamination. And then of course, the tree sends a sap into those areas and that's why you see so much of it in this piece. But, you know, this being a burl, I don't really know exactly why this would have so much pitch in it, other than the fact that it's just pine. So I'm just going to be quiet for a minute, and then we'll catch up here in a little bit. It seems to be that the deeper that we get into this, we seem to be exposing more and more pitch. I mean, that area right there is just so crazy with with pitch and also the uh, lot, a lot of bug holes in this too. Gigantic bug holes. So those would have, you know, I'm not against just leaving those in wood and, and finishing them out. A lot of people really like the natural uh, look of wood and they don't want any filling resin or soapstone or anything like that so I totally get it so that's what this piece was certainly intended on being well we've encountered some pretty major issues here this uh, there's the ring delaminations are really really bad and there is just a massive amount of pitch between the rings. There's no way I'm going to be able to sand this. A little bit of figure there. A little bit down in here too. So, you know, if we didn't have this pitch issue, and I mean, this is really bad. Uh, but man, does it ever smell like pine in here? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's just wicked how much it's, it's almost overpowering. Ah, uh, geez, I just don't know what to do here. I could keep going on it and keep going on it, but I, I, I don't know if it's going to get any better. I'll have to give Daryl a call and see what he thinks. But it's not looking good. So it is the next day and I did talk to Daryl and I expressed my concerns on the ring delamination, uh, making it basically unturnable. If you grab this by the foot uh, with these ring delaminations that are in here, I just don't really know if it's going to stay together. So that's, that's the one thing. And the other one that I have over on the bench is even worse. Uh, and then of course this pitch problem. I changed the camera angle so that I could maybe show this better. I mean, that is probably a quarter of an inch wide of pitch, and there's just no way you're going to be able to sand that. Not a chance. Now, this does have some some figure in it. Like up here near the top, there's actually, I would actually call this burl figure up here. Uh, this is probably more like crotch grain figure. Same with that. This here's fairly nice for sure. 
So, you know, there is some figure in these burls, but you know, it's typically not as good as um, hardwood burls, that's for sure. So, you know, the funny thing is my workshop door to, com to come into the workshop here is just right there. And I walked in through the man door this morning and I was standing there and, you know, because, you know, this is my space and I, I, I'm used to the smells and the sounds and when something's off, you know, it, it really kind of throws your senses into overdrive. And I was standing there going, what is that smell? It was just a really strange smell. And then I opened the man door to come into the workshop here and I was just slapped in the face with this huge pine saw smell. And it's, I mean, it's so strong in here that, you know, it, when I first came in, I thought my eyes were gonna water. That's how strong the smell is in here. So I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. But, you know, I never cleaned up from yesterday and I didn't really know for sure what we were gonna do here, but you know, in the end, it's not worth it. Well, that's it for the video. Uh, I had intended on this being an actually a Friday upload video, but you know, once I get into it, I'm like, I can't, I can't use this as a Friday upload video, but it certainly, hopefully was an educational tool for a lot of people. Now, over the years, uh, since I've been doing this for over 20 years, I've had a number of people approach me and say, oh, I've got some pine burls or spruce burls, you know, do you want them? And, and you know, I pretty much always turn them down. I, <laughs> and for, for those reasons right over there on the lathe, that's why I turn them down. I did do a couple one time, and one thing that I really noticed with it when I was sanding, and it had hardly any pitch in it, it didn't really have noticeable pitch in it and it still clogged up my sandpaper really really bad was that was the one thing the other thing along with that is when the finish went on it it really yellowed the look of it so that was another uh, detraction from it so you know i've pretty much have passed on them for a very very long time but i see it here in the comments that you ever work with pine burls and and, you know, I try and tell the people why I don't do it. And uh, I'm glad that Daryl came along and I was, you know, it's good and it's bad. I, I wanted this to work out for Daryl because he, because he, because he wanted one of these. But, you know, uh, it's a good educational tool to show you that that's probably what you're going to find when you get inside of uh, these pine burls or softwood burls, spruce and fir. You can throw them in that category. Uh, one species that I want to work with is tamarack. Uh, in this area, there's, there's no tamarack and if you're not familiar with what that is it's called larch wood as well uh there's a fair bit on the east coast but it's it it's a softwood tree that drops its needles every year uh, or in the, in the fall so it's it's kind of a really strange species uh it has a lot of resin in it and i don't know what it's going to be like to, to sand but it doesn't have sticky pitch in it like like that does or at least that pieces that i've seen that i've used for firewood actually haven't had it in it so i want to give that a try but i'll probably have to get some of that off the east coast <clears throat> so anyway hopefully you enjoyed the video uh again you know one of the main things that i want to do on my channel here is educate people uh in wood turning uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> uh, and, and another thing along with this this video is, you know, the, the commercial side of it. I know that very few wood turners will ever really talk about the commercial side of their business and, and how they make a living. And, you know, by buying pine burls like this, I mean, this is one of the ways you can, <laughs> you can go out of business in a hurry if you've spent a fair bit of money on them. So, you know, I'm always going to pass on them. But if it comes along and it's free, hey, throw it on the lathe and check it out. You never know. Maybe it's maybe it'll be spectacular on the inside of it. I have seen examples online of pine burls that are nice. And I know that there's going to be a lot of comments that say, well, you know, I've turned pine and it is great. But, you know, the thing is, it, 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 it will never compare to a maple burl or a birch burl or any any other species that I know of. I did do a... Um, a cedar burl which actually was quite nice but again cedar typically doesn't have that pitch in it where pine spruce and fir do all right well that's it let me know in the comments what you think about this week's video and of course if you want to be entered into the epoxy draw please leave designer epoxy down in the comments 
And of course, leave a comment down below to be entered into the bowl draws that I do as well. And don't forget about the sponsors down in the description too. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. And we will see you at the next one.